Because I know that simple minds view censorship as an acceptable form of argument, I'm citing Fair Use Section 107 of the Copyright Act, that's Title 17 U.S. Code, specifically the Comment and Criticism Clause. This video is going to be exposing the lies and dishonesty that's present in the Way of the Master teaching in regard to evolution. Now, Way of the Master is made by two of the finest 15th century minds, Kirk Cameron and Ray Comfort. Yes, the same Ray Comfort that's responsible for the atheist nightmare banana fiasco. Um, the vast majority of their arguments are just laughable from a number of different standpoints, and I'll be pointing those out. You've traveled to another dimension. A dimension not only of contradiction and speculation, but also one that defies logic and is based on blind faith. A journey into a nebulous land whose limits are that of imagination. You've just crossed over into the evolution zone. What you're about to see was not planned. There was no script, there were no writers, there were no cameras, no production crew, no lighting, no graphic artists, and no editors. The entire program just happened. There was a big bang in our production studio. And here we are. Could you believe that? Of course you couldn't. Nobody in his right mind could. And yet many evolutionists would have us believe that in the name of science. There was no creator, no space, no energy, no matter. There was nothing. And then there was this big bang, and out came the sea and the land. And birds and flowers and trees and elephants and giraffes and horses and cats and dogs. And of course, man and woman. And this took countless millions of years. We're now going to look closely at some of the believers of the theory of evolution. And we want you to listen very closely to the type of language they use. True believers use what we call the language of speculation. They'll start off sounding like an expert, but because there's such a lack of factual evidence for the theory, they are forced to use words like, we surmise, we believe, perhaps, maybe, could have, and possibly. And then they'll end up saying things like, well, I really don't know, I'm not an expert. So watch for these phrases and for these words.
Actually, that's also known as the language of science. In science, nothing is 100% proven. We're not 100% sure that there are cells, that there are atoms, that there's gravity, or really anything. I mean, of course, it's been all proven beyond reasonable doubt, but nothing is 100%. As such, we use qualifiers, such as maybe, perhaps, probably. I mean, that's simply how scientists talk. I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, and it prevents you from making false statements, period, regardless of the veracity or the amount of evidence that's for them. Also, pay particular attention to the last thing that he said about the I'm not an expert, as it's going to become very apparent and somewhat comical here in a minute why people are saying that. This next clip is Comfort going around interviewing random college students about evolution. So do you believe in the theory of evolution? I, I do. Do you believe man evolved from apes? Yeah, because of biological evidence, I believe that. So do you think man evolved from apes? Yeah, I do believe man evolved from apes. Do you believe in the theory of evolution? Yes, definitely. Could you be specific about the evidence? Um, how the planet Earth evolved from heavy particles and matter coming together, and then slowly as it cooled off, um, single cell life forms developed in the ocean, and then slowly they evolved into multi-celled organisms, and then eventually into humans. How did it begin? I don't know. Probably the Big Bang Theory. What caused the Big Bang? Probably an asteroid from another planet that had, uh, had the same thing happen to it millions of years ago. Where did the other planet come from? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. There's a lot of things. I mean, you look at, first of all, like homologous structures in animals and analogous structures and these things called vestigial organs. Um, Did they come out of the sea? Um, yeah. Yeah, that's where they evolved because that's the only place that could support life. Okay. When they came out of the sea, was there air? Was there air? It took a while, but yeah, air eventually because of the breakdown of atoms and stuff. And it was eventually released. So yeah, I think there was air when they came out. Cause When they came out, what came out of the ocean? I don't know. You tell me.